Oh, what just happened? Did it work? I don't know. Oh, Hang on, she's... Yep, you're on. on. Are yep. there? Look out. Right, okay, so we've got... We've got one. Hey. Is in, so you're going to have to turn like that. Sorry about this, guys. We had technical difficulties. Gremlin's in the house. So is that... That looks like it's all working, yeah? Yeah. Right, okay then. So we should be here now. We're up and running. Uh, hello everybody, Perfect Roll Saturday, uh, joined by Josie Josie there. Um, Darren's already. Right, who's in? Let's get a uh, roll call of everybody Alison that's... Alison uh, Garnet, Ruby Lou, Beverly Power. They've got Alison's here, Beverly. Beverly's here, Mark. Ruby Lou. Uh, Toya, I know if Toya's doing that, if Toya in. Doesn't say yet. Oh. Right, so we'll just keep talking for a couple of minutes, and um, I'll tell you what, if everybody's listening, was anybody doing Jaffa Cakes? Because I'm doing the Jaffa Cake one, I think it was only Mark in the end. If someone's doing that, we need to do something first with the orange, but if not, we can just go straight on. I'm getting out, keep putting my glass. Oh, you told me. Don't should be. Okay. But you need to turn that down. Got 25 in. Right, so 25 people in. Is that everybody? We must be late as well now, aren't we? What's the time? That's fine. Oh, not, not too bad. Right, first off then, everybody flip your ovens on to 180. Get them sort of warming up. Right, so was anybody doing um, Jaffa Cakes? If you are, I'm going to need to give you a little, some of you are going to have to tell me and I'll show you how to do the Jaffa Cakes. Yeah, I started with gelatin, but then I had to switch to an orange. But then I suddenly realised I forgot to post up, apart from Mark, and tell people we're doing it with an orange. So there's my uh, little Jaffa Cake mate, so we have to make like a jelly. And I had to switch to an orange. I forgot to post up apart from Mark. Oh, delay, yeah. <laughs> I can hear. Do I need to turn that down now? Because then I can't hear. Right. Oh, there, Damn. I think I've fixed it. Oh, it was your end. Okay. I could hear myself coming for it. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> right. So we need to know anybody doing Jaffa Cake Jelly one? Or are we all just going for. If they comment, I can see it. If you comment, let us know. If not, we're going to ask. Crack straight on with the profiteroles. What we do is we make the profiteroles up first, we get them in, and then we're going to do all the different fillings. I'm going to probably make about five or six different kinds of fillings up. Um, I'm also well, I'm going to show you all like the different variations because everybody's going to be doing different and it makes it kind of hard to do. So if I literally just show everybody different kinds of things that we can put in, I actually had a go. And a little practice of you today. That oh, there is like inside. mini pack with uh, like a chocolate and almonds on. I kind of done a little video separate because I didn't want to confuse people showing you different things. So I might pop another video up just showing you how to do these. Yes. Come on. Gary, question Hello. for you. Oh, on, far away. If I'm some custard, will that if work? If you have oh. got some ready-made vanilla bean extra thick custard. Yeah. If I whip it, will it go like does it, cream? Does it? Um, what's in it? Is that that stuff you used last week? Oh yeah. This. Play with milk and cream. Madagascar vanilla. Cup. No. You won't be able to whip that up. But what you can do with that, no, 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 what you can do with this is you get whipped cream. Yeah. Whip your cream up and then put some spoonfuls of that in to keep a okay. consistency of cream. And then you'll end up with a vanilla, which is kind of a proper filling that goes in the parry breast. That's what it should be. Well, it's too oh. lazy to make. 
So you can do that. We'll, do, we'll go to that when we get to it. But yeah, you can definitely do that. Right, so is everybody ready to go? Yep, thumbs up. Thumbs up from everybody, and then we'll start. It's not too dark, is it? I've got light. No. Do you want it on? Oh, it's right there. Cheers, everybody. I'll just wait for Josie to get back in her chair and then we'll uh, start. Uh, the rest is right then. So, hopefully, everybody's got everything weighed out. Um, so, for the page through, you should have, if you're doing just a single mix, which is going to make around 20 fit of rolls, or about sort of eight or nine eclairs, or the shoe buttons, about eight of them, because obviously they're a bit bigger. But what I would try and do is, if you're going to do profiterole, try and do one or two. If you're doing all three, it's a little bit hard to sort of cook them, because they all cook at different times. So you're looking at, I would stick, well, if you want to do all shoe buttons, it's not a problem. I'm going to show you all three on mine. And uh, and you can decide what ones you want to do. But if you try and stick to, like, either the eclairs and the... So the little ones, Claire's and Profiteroles, because they cook the same time. If you're going to do shoe buns, they're a bit thicker and they take about another 10 minutes in the oven. You need to keep them on a separate tray. Right, anyway then, so straight off. One mix is seven fluid ounces of cold water, um, four teaspoons of sugar. But after trying it yesterday, I decided we need to cut down to just a teaspoon and a bit, because mine was too sweet. I knew the way was already out of it. You could uh, you can keep it in there, not a problem. But I just took it, I just found it a bit too sweet. Um, three ounces of the butter, 115 grams or four ounces of plain flour, a pinch of salt, and three eggs. Right. So that is chew pastry. So now you want to grab yourself a nice sort of heavy sized pan. Yeah, prepare for a walk. Yeah, uh, seven ounces of water. So seven ounces of water into your pan. And we take your butter, which you should have on the kitchen. Um, eighty-five grams or three ounces of butter, whichever way you're doing it. That goes straight into the water. Pinch of salt. And your sugar. So on the recipe it says four teaspoons of sugar. Cut it down to two. Just stick them straight into the water. Now you need to pop this on the stove, bring it to the boil. Again, you have to be a little bit careful here because it can, if you're not watching it, it can sort of bubble up, it will go. So you just need to keep an eye out. But while that's going, it's a good time to have a little, little drink. Have we got any spectators in the house today? Oh, quiet. Everybody's really quiet. Nobody's doing nothing. Have we got? Have you got the... But they must all be cooking. They must all be cooking. If they're cooking, they can't be uh, typing at the same time. If you're not cooking and you hear the words shoe, butter, melt, stove, pan, egg, or oven, you know what you got to do. Chocolate. Or chocolate. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Vicky's doing... Right, okay, right, so... I'm going to have to... Right, okay, ask her to do you want to do the orange? Okay. Right, okay. Right, so I'm going to have to ask her to do the orange. Okay. Right, okay. Yeah, right, so... Right, go on, what were you going to say? I was going to say, does anyone else have problems with their wooden spoons? I've had to separate our wooden spoons to sweet and savoury ones because my mum uses them all on curry and then everything you try and cook tastes like bloody chicken tikka because you, no. you can never get the smell out of them. That's because you've got rubbish wooden spoons. You get decent ones at a coast. Lift your spoon 
before you put it in this mixture or you're going to get curried profiteroles. <laughs> Right, so we, we've got to hear back from... Uh, Mark's only just got in, so he's only just mess, mess, measuring everything. That's all right, Mark, we're rolling on it. This, this, this process for the moment is going to take sort of 15 minutes and everybody can catch up with this. Because we've got to leave it to cool for five minutes, otherwise you cook the eggs. So you've got plenty of time to catch yeah. up, Mark. Is that Heckler Mark or different Mark? Heckler Mark. No, it's Mark James. Oh, Mark James. Oh, no, this is different Mark. This is a uh, gig Mark. This is good, Mark. Yeah, he's a he's a planet rocker and a steel house guy. That got called off today, didn't it? No. Bamboo spoons. Uh, B said you should use bamboo spoons. Don't know why. Where's a bamboo spoon from? <laughs> right. So we need to find out from Jack. One, isn't it? <laughs> yes, the wooden spoon will make your shoe taste cheesy if it's a savoury one. Very important Ooh. distinction. We right. can do savoury petals. Ah, so Chris Austin, orange juice, gelatin, sugar. What do I do right. with it? Something first or later? Right, um, oh, this is throwing me now because nobody got asked, nobody got out there they were doing what players. Right, okay. Um, so I did it with the gelatin, right? I'm just going to have to, uh, we'll, we'll go back to that. Let's get the shoe bun done first and then we'll go back over the flavourings in a second. And then we'll, I'll whiz it through some sort of orange juicy. I mean, it kind of worked with the orange juice, but it was just better with a whole proper orange. But we'll forget Mark that. says short time, Jason just says shoe. Shoe. Right, so anyway, everybody get like uh, they're uh, flavouring the Jaffa cake and everything for a second. We'll come back to that in a minute. We'll get on with the shoe bun. We'll get that going. We can get that in the oven, get it cooling down. Because there's going to be a half hour gap where we can go through all the different flavours that we can do. And everybody's not doing every flavour. So you're going to have a little bit of uh, Vicky says she rest changed to Nutella. Ooh. Yeah, we got Nutella. Yeah, well, let's, let's get the shoe buns done first. Right, right, everybody, this should be boiling. I hope you're keeping an eye on it. Basically, you want to melt. Mine's not even melted yet. What's meant to be in this bowl? I don't think I've got the right things in it. You should have your water, your yep. butter, a little bit yep. of salt, and then a little And it's yep. meant to be like that? Look at mine. Whoa. Does it not come That's to the boil yet? No. Have you got the water? You've got seven fluid ounces of water, yeah? Yeah, um, is that 200 mil? All right, mine's done. Chucky Plank said what's in the pan. All right, so, yeah, yeah, 200 mil, yeah. yeah. So in the pan, seven fluid ounces of water, yeah, 100 and... I'm doing like so many different recipes here, so. 85 grams of butter, 7 fluid ounces of water, salt, uh, salt and caster sugar. Now you should be bringing that to the boil. Mine's done. It's all totally melted and I've got like a frothy sort of... Get that out there. I've got a frothy kind of mix. So it's like watery froth. Right, so I'll let everybody catch up first before I do the next stage. Say chew bun. Yeah, five times Mark said it. <laughs> what are you drinking, Gary? Looks like an ant trap. Blue, is it blueberry cider? Or black, Blue. black currant cider, blackberry cider? Do That's bacon right. stew shots over, over two? Yeah, that's right, don't you? Yeah. That's Toy asking that one. Do right, so what's yours done? Is yours looks like it's boiling now, yeah? Thing now, what do I do? It has not got right. bubbles, it's got a bit bubbly. When do I call it a day? Take it off the stove. So everybody should have a melted water like and butter liquid. Yeah, that looks good. Take it off the stove. Now you chuck your flour. Everybody just pop your flour in. 
flower's gone off. Went off in February. But I had a look, there was no termites in it. Right, so gently stir the flour in. And it should start to form a dough. And as it starts to mix in, then you can start to beat it a bit more. Lulu Lou said, have you tried Thatcher's Cloudy Cider yet? No, we're waiting to do that, aren't we? What, well, Cloudy Lemon? No, it's the new one. Cloudy Cider. There's a new one out, isn't there? Cloudy right. Lemon? No way. Doesn't get egg in this yet. Right. Egg, uh, forget the egg for a minute. Just concentrate on this. <laughs> Let's start jumping out. Right, so now we should all have something it's along the lines of that. Like, uh, if anybody cooks, it's like a room. Yeah, is that nice and smooth? No, mine's got clumpy lumps of flour in it. Right. So feed it, feed it around, and it should go nice and sort of have like a, a nice silky smooth. If you've made bread, you'll notice how it all sort of comes away from the side of the pan, and you get like that smooth, glossy look to it. Like mashed potatoes, toy said. Yeah, yeah, that's a good sort of thing. So there's mine there, and you can still see it's quite. Good. Don't taste nice. No, don't get taste in it. <laughs> it's, it's gross. Right. So in your pan, once you've got that mixed up, what you need to do then is just spread it around your pan a bit. I just flatten it out, kind of like that there, so that we can just cool it down because we've got to get eggs into this now. Making it like into a mashed potato bowl. Chris says yeah, it's all scramble if you put it in there. No, don't put the eggs in yet. Nobody put the eggs in. Just you've got to get to that stage there and we've got to leave it five minutes because Chris is right. If you pop the eggs in, they will turn to scramble egg and cook. And then you'll end up with like lumps of egg inside your shoe buns. Shoe buns. Another shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shoe room. Yeah, actually, when I did the Cheerios, it's very it's a, it's a serious, similar sort of thing. Right, so basically, yours nice and smooth now, Josie. I assume that everybody else is. So flatten him out to the side, of it, just stick it to the side for five minutes. Just forget. Right, so next thing, grab your three eggs, and then crack in a bowl, and then just whisk them up. Just makes it a bit easier to get into the into the mix in a minute. If you put them in whole, they sort of go in in like lumps. Not the best thing. So you free eggs and then just break them down a bit. I'm assuming everybody had piping bags and piping nozzles. If you didn't... Is that for this stage the next stage? Sorry? The buns, or is that for the insides? Uh, no, for the buns. We need it twice. You're gonna, we have to pipe all the shoe buns out in a second. If you haven't got bags, I know there was someone who didn't have one. We can take two little teaspoons and we dip them in water, and then we can like do little dobs. So you make like um, just sort of uneven ones, but you know, it's fine. Mark said he's nice and smooth. Really, my heart. Dan said, where's your apron? Where's my apron? <laughs> bad. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Not bad, Pop. No one juicy to me off putting the apron on. The trouble we went to to make you that apron doesn't even wear it. Absolutely <laughs> outrageous. He won. You know what we right. did? We sewed all of those badges on. Jill actually helped me. We sewed all those badges on, and then we realised we'd forgotten one, so we had to take them all off and do it all again. You had to take them all off, did no. you? And do it again. <laughs> she did. She did. We all on, and then I can't, I can't remember which one just had arrived last, and I hadn't put it in the pile, so we had to take them all off and rejig them. And then we sewed them on again, but then I think it was those damn crows badge. I sewed it right through the pocket. So I had to take that off again and sew it again. He <laughs> said, sew the pocket shut. <laughs> Bloody idiot. 
Right, Les, we've got like a little couple of minutes off now, so Cuba. Ooh, I found these. Will icing bags work? That work? Yep. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah. So I got like uh, my blue ones from work that we use, same sort of thing. What kind of nozzle do we want? Uh, the nozzles, well, you know, it's, I've got that one, which is like uh, just a plain nozzle. But we can go with, uh, you, basically you want a nice, needs to be reasonable size because we've got to get, which is paste you out. But you can have star ones and open them up. Time, Michael, right, so if everybody just takes their mix again, just gives it a little beat around again, because you just need to get a bit of that heat out. So give it a quick stir around. It's a uh, rum. Oh. So a little stir around in your pan. I reckon when I do the piping, you're going to have to hold the thing because you don't need to see it. Right, so can we have a thumbs up from everybody? Has everybody got their eggs whisked up? And has everybody got their shoe beginning paste mix all cooling down? Because the next stage is going to be beating the eggs in, but we'll do that together, wait for everybody to catch up. If one doesn't have a nozzle, is there a... I've got these nozzles, but they're for icing, really, so they're a bit skinny. Yeah, a bit small, aren't they? Um... Found this one. Your bags are like, uh, that's it. Yeah. Well, that Too skinny. Maybe. But if, if it's rubbish bags, yeah, you've gotten it. I've got or they already been cut. What's the Is end of your bag look like? No, I'm a cut. it's not cut. It's not cut. So you can literally just cut, just cut. like, a bit. you can cut a bit off and just pipe through that. Just makes it a bit harder when it comes off, that's all. But you'll be able to. Uh, you can literally just do it. I could do it like that, but the, the actual nozzle makes it come out a bit better and come off a bit better, which you'll find you'll get all messy and sticky in a minute. But. What about this one? Will that work? Oh, well, that's a bit bigger, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll try that. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah, the bigger it is, you just need to push this mix out, because obviously looking at your paste now, you can see it's going to be quite sort of, it, it won't come out like cream, if that makes sense. Up from Jackie Pang. Right, Jackie Pang's ready. Um, what else are you doing? Gemma, are we ready to go? Uh, Mark said he's got to get his bag out. Get your bag out, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> right, I reckon we should be good to go now. Then I think, I'm assuming everybody's up to this point. So, Cubans. What's that you got there? Coco Gin. Cocoa gin? Yeah, cool. cocoa gin with lilt. That's what I'm drinking. That's interesting. Right, so now we should have like a lukewarm pasty mix. Now we're going to tip the egg into this. But you've got to tip the egg in a little tiny bit at a time. So you've got three eggs there, so you should have the same sort of size amount of liquid as I have. That's going to take about six goes of mixing in. Cheers. Was that just like neat ginger? <laughs> this is gin, but wait a minute. This is cocoa gin. Wait, wait till you see what's going with it, though. With a bit of this. Lil. Yeah. Oh, man, that's, <laughs> that's ruining gin. Oh. <laughs> right then, so. We should have our pasty mix. You whisk up eggs. Now start putting a little tiny bit in at a uh, time, but like a tablespoon at a time. If you put too much in, we cook the egg. And then you just got to slowly mix it in. But this can get a little bit, it goes in a little bit slidey. You've got to be careful, it doesn't start all shooting out the side. Vicky says this is still warm. Now it's fine. We're, we're right with warm, just don't want red hot, Vicky. Everybody, in with your Sorry? bowl, like, so you destroy the bowl and just mix it in now. Slowly. Yeah, you mix a little egg in at a time, not a lot. Don't put the whole three eggs in. Yeah, I'll put a little tiny bit. This is how much I'm putting in a, in a go. 
that. Just a little bit like that. Egging your mashed potato. Pretty much. So then you just keep stirring this in and you keep mixing it in and getting back to that smooth paste and it gradually gets smoother and smoother as we get all the egg in. The last bit you can get a bit more egg in. But like I say, just be careful it don't like fly out of the pan because it can go until the egg beats in. It goes like a little bit sort of slidey. Like um, if anybody's ever been a butcher and they've known chitlins, it goes like a chitlin sort of. Yeah, quite weird. So egg in, beat it right back in. This takes a little bit of elbow work now, this part. This is still the shoe mix. This is still the shoe mix, yeah. Another shot. Oh. I'm beating. <laughs> this tastes better than anything you get at the botanist. Ah. Uh, little ginger in there. Tastes like smoky bacon. Drank the nitrogen part instead. Smoky bacon. This two what Joe's scrambled egg. Right, we Wales Terry. I said, yeah, that's looking good. Everybody should be getting through their egg now. Are you beating this in? Make sure you beat this in. You've got to really give it a bit of elbow grease there. I've, I've only put a tiny bit of egg in so far. I, last time I made shoe pastry, it curdled. Yeah, you just do it slow. A little bit, mix it, a little bit, mix it. Plus it goes, so I think. It goes like very sort of slimy. I, I, can anybody see that? So if you're getting this, you're doing good. So it goes like a sort of slimy mix and it follows around the pan and eventually it like beats itself back in. I see Josie's. Jo What's yours look like? Are you not it? It's in two parts at the moment. I can't really tip yep. it all and pour out. Yep. It does, it like separates and then all of a sudden it goes back, back to its original state. It does take a bit of eating. Is she doing it asleep? Right, are you doing it? Oh, they're eating? taking it in turns. <laughs> they're sharing the beating. Yeah. <laughs> it's pie lady gonna, when's it pie ladies go? Where's what? Oh, when you, go. Oh, yeah, you should bake one. Yeah, you should bake one week. Should we do that? <laughs> we could do that. Pie lady yeah, bakes. Pie lady and my mum to do it, and we can just get drunk. And <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm getting towards the end of my egg now, so most others sh sort of should be getting there. Oh, Hooray, hey, we've got Shane Greenall in the, in the house. All right, Shane? Loving the new album. Came about, uh, yeah, that was it. I was going to say, was you actually down to play Steel House this year? I'll see you down for next year. I just don't remember them on it for this year. Obviously it got cancelled, but they're on for next year. I thought they were on. Oh. They were on, they? I didn't think they were on. I gathered they would be on, being Welsh 10th anniversary and everything, but I didn't think it was announced. Apparently, Jen's got the easy job doing the bacon. Mark's got the hard job of doing all the shots. Yeah, see. Look at mine, I'm getting down. I put a little bit too much egg in there now, and now it's gone very sloppy, but it beat it, but you end up chasing your mix around the pan. Oh, Luby Lou's used egg replacement powder. She said it's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Any vegans? I don't know. I mean, right, egg replacement powder, if it doesn't work, it's nothing to do with me. 
But then your, it's looking good. your cheesecake worked, didn't it? And you had all sorts of weird and wonderful things in that. That was moose cake. So, what is egg replacement powder? Probably something they use in the war, is it? Okay. Right, so I've got my last bit of egg going in. So when this is all beaten up, we're going to transfer this to the piping bags, and then that's when the fun starts of trying to create all your shapes. What, James said, what do you call that? What? Pastry. Shoe pastry. <laughs> there you go, shoe. Another stop. Mark James is doing it, is he? Yeah. Oh, can you get shop replacement powder? <laughs> That's the other mark. Right. Okay. So I've got all my eggs mixed in there now. And you've ended up with a nice glossy drop down sort of shoe pastry. Shoe. I'll let everybody catch up. These is looking good. Yeah. Right, so you can all tell me when you've all got your eggs in, everything's mixed up and done. Two pastry. <laughs> Just for Mark. Right, so I've got beans, Everywhere. I've got shoe pastry on me phone. Again, shop. <laughs> on <the> phone. <laughs> right, so um, body. This is looking like mutt, mutt snuts? What's mutt snuts? Mutt snuts, good. Oh, okay. What up, Mark? Which Mark? Uh, Mark James. You can see. Oh, all in. Chris, all wheels in. Great magic. I'm assuming everybody should pretty much should have all that egg in now. Um, yeah, I'm I'm cooking, but you need to wait for me to catch up on the shots. Okay, we're little waiting, Helen. little Helen. We're <laughs> waiting for you. So we need to wait to catch up with you. Right, so is all yours in, Josie, or not? No, it's looking like intestines at the moment. Yeah, don't put no more in, mix it in then. If it's looking like intestines, you've got to mix it back to a paste. I said it looked like chitlins. Chitlins is intestines. Alison Garnet's done. Alison's done. Oh, that's our neighbour over Across the road. The road. <laughs> so we've got the street involved now. As you'll notice, Alison, it's not really that professional. It's just about having a bit of fun. Josie went. Please <laughs> <laughs> <For> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's like nearly ready you can get um one or two baking trays out and line them with a little bit of a baking parchment grease proof paper get them ready get your piping bags ready and your nozzles and then we'll let everybody all sort of catch up to the same spot and then i'll go through what i'll do first is i'll do a couple of each let everybody see a shoe bun let everybody see a shoe. better roll shoe bun. Everybody see a bit of roll and everybody see an eclair and then you can decide what you want to do. But like I said, I would do either all shoe buns, because they're bigger. Yeah. All you can mix eclairs and profit rolls because they cook at around the same time. Or you can have two trays and let's rotate your trays around. But you don't don't put your shoe buns with your and shoe again. Shoe again. Don't put them together because they cook and then it's the opening the oven doors now. You don't want them to go down because we want to create this like puff. And if you keep opening the oven door, you end up like down in the puff a bit, if that makes sense. Down in the puff. I don't even know. That don't make sense at all, does it? The puff Deflating. won't appear. It, yeah, they deflate if you open the oven door too much. I'm impressed. Jem has removed pre prepared bacon trays from the fridge. What? Very good, Jem. <laughs> Right, I'm assuming everybody should have all their eggs mixed in now, yeah? 
Jackie Crown is doing Aki shoe buns. What's that? Um, enlighten me. A K I shoe buns. Or A K L shoe buns. Okay. What's that, Jackie? No, you just just. I'm doing. Oh, all. <laughs> Which one was your point of you at? Right. You said shoe a lot of times then, Helen. I think that's at least three times. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yours so must be done now, Jeff. Is it? Is it looking? Yeah, there you go. That's it. Yeah. Is all your eggs? Yeah. All the eggs in. All the eggs in. Right. So everybody should be up to this sort of spot now. I'm, I'm going to carry on unless someone shouts at me to stop. Oh, I need to do my train. Yeah, get your trays. Turn the hob off now. Yeah, you don't need the hob on, that should be turned off. Oh, you've got electric, haven't you? Basically, you just want a um, standard size tray, a little bit of paper on there. I mean, I've got two trays, two shelves on to go. Does it matter if it's got sides? Can you cook it on that's that? That's fine. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Having her on, so she asks all stupid yeah. questions, which then I can then answer. <laughs> Mark said, at this way, I'm going to need half an hour break to go to the supermarket and get another bottle of rum. Well, we're going to have an half an hour break in a minute while Jen gets your flavourings ready, so you can head back down to the, to the rum shop then. It's not across the road for him anymore, is it? Oh, no, you used to be across the road, Mark. Well, it's a little, not much better, but a little bit better. Shoe buns. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. right, so we need to back. For those who haven't got nozzle, you can cut like the tip off and you want it about the size of your little finger. So if you cut a hole to so Josie, was you using your star nozzle? Um what you would you recommend? I might, will it work, do you reckon? Give it a go? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, it, yeah. It, it give a better thing. You'll just have like, um, for fitter rolls that are going to be, you know, a bit shaped to muscle. So they look slightly different than the norm, <laughs> normal fitter rolls. But, yeah, it done, I reckon. So everybody get your bags ready. So you want your, whatever nozzle you're using. If you haven't got a bag, don't worry. If anybody has a bag, let me know and I'll show you how to do it without a bag we can do like little like the dorset knob biscuits if you've ever seen them so not for them now. right now the secret of this this mix as you notice you've mixed it up it's pretty pretty gloopy and and um sort of sticky so you're going to get a little bit of mess here so take your bag and you want to get your hand like that and we want to fold the bag over your hand so you got it like that and then we can get all of this in. Yeah, that's it. She knows what she's doing. And then you can, when we start spooning it in, you spoon it against your hand. Use your hand as to get it all off, and you'll keep it all in there. So we'll fill our piping bags up. Scrape your pants down, get everything in there, you don't want to waste nothing. So Dawn Cole hasn't got a bag, so she could right. pop bits on, could she? Yeah, what you need to do... Right, hang on, let me... Everybody fill out their bags, I'm just going to show Dawn what to do. Sock works quite well, if you've got an old sock that's got a hole in it that was going to go in the bin anyway, you might as well, you might as well get one last use out of it. Yeah, because Vicky Fard and her bag's too small as well. Right, okay, so everybody that doesn't want to pipe it, get yourself a little cup of water, get two teaspoons, just stick them in the water. Right, I'm going to unplug people from here. I'm going to just move you down to the level down here so people can see. Just put all of it in the bag at once, or can you do two servings? Um, it'd be easy if you put it all in at once because it becomes quite sticky getting that back in the bag. Well, apparently Gemma has put hers in a pint-sized glass. Do you fill it? 
So she's popped it up on her. Yeah, that's another good way of doing it, Gemma. But I'm just a chef, and we always use our hands. We, we, my pint glasses are for drinking out of, not for coming stunt out. Right. So the issue I got now is I didn't know I was going to have to do the. What you call it, this I one. So I'm going to have to. You can see clearly, right? So I'm going to have to open your pipe and bag up. Obviously, people. But it gets really messy. Oh, as fast as I fill it. Is that meant to happen? Yeah. Just lay. Don't. Yeah. Just. You, no, it shouldn't come out. We will, but you have to get it all in and scoop it back in and lay it down until we're ready. Right. So I'm quickly going to go through. Get wet spoons. Just pop it in your mix, and then just. Spoon off like little. Can you see that, love? Yep. So I'm gonna spoon off. Oh, Toya's just poured out at the end all over the floor. Pick it up then, Toya. You do little, little spoons like that, and you make little little blobs like that. You want about. This is like coming out the end as well. Two teaspoons, and then that'll make a little blob like that. That would do fine for... So everyone can do that if it's all coming out? No, I? just put it back in. If everybody just lays it... Right, lay your bags down. When you get it, lay your bag down like that. Fill it all up and then get your bag laying down. It won't come out. I told you, everybody, this would be the fun, messy part. Mark said the way this is going, he's going to need a pint, shot, a pint glass for the shots. <laughs> right, so keep that bag down. I say keep it flat like that. Right, is everybody there? So let's do. I think you're going to have to come and hold this um, thing. Look, can you sort of just fill me in and see? Right, so for fitter rolls, do fitter rolls first. We just do a little round, and then you just gently squeeze it out. You want to come out? You want about the size of like no, no a bit about, bigger. Yeah. About 50p, a little bit bigger than 50p, it's about an inch and a half, and then leave a little bit of a gap for it to come. Can everybody see what I'm doing now? Just gently whirl it around. Don't worry about the little thing on the top, that'll stop in a second. And then lift your bag back up like that to stop it coming out. So hopefully now people can see the sizes there that I've done. Okay, so that's the profeta rolls. And then that's the spooned one. Right, so next, if you want to do some um, eclairs, just press it gently and then just don't press down on the bag, just let it fall onto the paper and then stop and then just pull it up. So there's your eclair. Do it again, Josie needs to see it again. Right, so the eclair, so start there, give it a little press. And then lift your bag above the paper and then just let it fall down naturally. So if you press it down, you'll stop it puffing up. And then at the end, just stop and then put it down. Do so you end up like, so we've got eclairs there. Remember that when you're not piping, keep this bag that way because it'll just stop it running out because it is, like I say, a messy, gooey mix. Okay, so that's them. So now I'm going to show you the... Shoe buns. So who's doing shoe buns? Basically, this one you need to push a bit more. So just put it in the middle and then just squeeze. Keep squeezing. Don't lift your nozzle up. Keep squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And you want about quadruple the size of the shoe bun. That's the shoe bun, and that's the um, profiter roll. Can you see the difference? I'll do another shoe bun. You just push it, put it in the middle and then just squeeze it. Don't lift your bag up, just squeeze it and you let this just fill out into a natural round shape. Don't move your bag around, let the mixture find itself. And when you think you've got enough, just stop pressing and lift it up. Right, I'll do another quick run through of the other ones now. So again, the profiterole, which is there, so we just do a little swirl with the profiterole. There's one, there's two. As you can see, I've done what I told everybody not to do, put them on the same side because they're all going to cook different, but we'll get around that. Now you should be coming towards the end of your mix. I'm going to do one more eclair so you can see that. 
So you start at the top, press it out, and then I just lift it up, and then I just literally let the mix pull down. But I'm getting to the end now, so that one's uh, pretty shit. But it still tastes good. And then the mix down. Right. So that there. Right, so that there is my little ghost. Now we can see the little rubbishy one in the corner. That's the spooned one. So if you've got no piping bag, we've got eclairs, which are about sort of six inches long. And then we've got profiteroles that side. I did a couple of sort of shoe bun type ones. Didn't make them too big. You can make these a lot bigger if you want, but by the time you fill them with cream. And then there's just a couple of other on there. So, right, everybody getting on? Um, your mum said, could she have a shot, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm back up there. She's banned. Who's, who's got messy hands? I would imagine loads of people come. Look at this, I'm literally pristine. Yeah, don't pull it that way, it's all going to drip out. <laughs> Mark's good, Mark Jane. Right, let's have some um, have some thumbs up. We've got everything done at the moment. There's a couple. There's another little stage we've got to do to this. In I a want second. to see Josie's. Stop talking. See Josie's. She's still piping. <laughs> Mark James is plastered. Two um, buns. Guess what I had for breakfast today? Um, cake. Darren Edwards is good. Oh, off cuts. Yeah, <laughs> the last of the offcuts. I can start the real thing now. Chris Austin, um, some leftovers in case these didn't come out well. What? How you got <laughs> leftovers? Just fill another tray up, Chris, because you can like bake these, take them out, and then put some more in. So you shouldn't have anything left. They're looking but right. What there you go. See, they look all right. A little, little dollars of cloth. <laughs> so you've got another tray for that that mix there. What are you going to do with that one? Eclairs? Yeah. Okay. And Mark said off cuts. Is that another shot? That was last week. you got to say shoe. Is it? Off cuts or shoe? We, we add a word to the bank. Okay. okay. Well, uh, Right, so hopefully we're all getting to the point. I'll let everybody get everything on the tray, and then there's one more stage we've got to do before we pop them in the oven. Luby Lou's got 8.5 buns ready. 8.5? <laughs> oh, Luby Lou, you must have done shoe buns then, I would have like, um, yeah, shoe buns. If you've only got eight. I've got shoe hundreds. Buns. The shop. You've done little ones, yeah. Hundreds. See, because you'll have different, because you've got the star, aren't you? So you're going to have, um... I've got, look, these little, I've got little dollops and little sausages yeah. they're my dollops yeah. and they're my sausages well you have got loads haven't you she hasn't she okay. <laughs> 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 or double mix huh? um yeah, he's he's double mix. Mix. and two jobbly bits well to be fair it doesn't make a difference whether you've got four or good ones they're all going to stay taste good <laughs> right so if everybody's up to this point and we'll get a cup of water. Yeah. I thought we'd have a tray. How many trays have you got? I know. Oh, we've got a fourth tray now. This is the mix. Got... It's, like, it's like Mary Poppins' handbag. This icing bag. <laughs> Mark's got 22 little buns. They're enough for a football team. Mark, Mark. Which one? Jen Mark. Jen, well, you can get free. I'm not playing football now. Uh, Jackie Pang's got five big buns and a little one. Yeah, well, Jackie Pang's going to have big ones. <laughs> so, 
So, right, Jackie Pan, so you've got, if you've only got five big buns out of that, I would probably have got eight out of mine. But yours might take a little bit longer cooking. So remember this, it's quite important, the cooking process of it. You, because if you take them out too soon, they just go back down. But then it doesn't matter too much if they go down a little bit. If they're, if they're nearly cooked inside, it's great, because you put the cream in and the cream expands it all back up again. I'm going to do like my last one is a little handmade one because there you go yeah hands, hands right so them. everybody should be on there now not jane's got 24 perfect rolls so you want a little little glass of water now and what you need to do is dip your finger in it and then just brush over every one that you've done what, with water? yeah because oh. the water will I'll act like a bit of steam it'll allow you to pop the little bit you know where you piped it and you've got that little pointy bit you can rub it down with this water, and the water will also act as a, a steaming agent. So when we put them in the hot oven, they puff up a bit better. So if we all get on with that now. Okay. All right, so I'll just do one up to the camera here. So I literally got water on my two fingers, and then you can just press it down and dab a little bit of water all over them. Okay. And then you've got to count how many you've made, and the person who's made the least has to do a shot. And the person okay. who's made the most has to do a shot as well. Mark's a bit worried. He's drunk so much and Jack wants him to go on the trampoline. Oh, Helen's had 22 shots. Little <laughs> Helen. <laughs> right, so we should all be dabbing all these with water now. Yeah. Um, Chris Austin said, can he just use a water spray? Um, no. Well, you can do, but you need to push the little pointy bits down. Obviously, don't want to use his fingers. Yeah, but you clean oh, wash your hands. Yeah. See that? I've got a little pointy bit there, and I can just push that down. Because what will happen is, is them little pointy bits might just burn a little bit on top. Because they're like so wispy or whatever. But, you know, the whole thing of this is just homemade. So we're not looking for pristine... Toy says hers is running. Look for yourself, Gary. <laughs> How run is running? I mean, Toya, look, if you look at mine, they're not running at all, they're piped out, they're done. Did you have the, the right quantities of the mix? Yeah, she's wondering if she's done something wrong. It should be like, like she said before, like a mashed potato. It's that type of consistency. Even my Dobby one is like finding itself and gone down. Um, um, Tori, if you just go back through your, go back for your recipe, we had seven ounces of water, 200 mils, um, a couple of teaspoons of sugar, uh, 85 or three ounces of butter, 115 or four ounces of plain flour, pinch of salt and three medium eggs. That's what we should have had. If you've got it a bit runny, it's got to be a liquid thing that you've done wrong, I would have thought. So just make sure you only put... Uh, you put the right quantity of water in. Mark James says his looks like any scotch eggs. That's about right, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, scotch pancakes. Yeah. Yeah. Welsh, Welsh pancakes. Yeah. Welsh scotch. A Welsh game, isn't it? Right, so I'm literally getting towards the end of mine. I should dump all these in water. Toy, if you've done yours wrong, if you've got the ingredients again, we can go back for it again. The thing to do is put them in the oven, they might still turn out anyway. Mark said you had too much run. Mm. Mark said you had too much. Get back in the pan and picking it up. <laughs> right, so has everybody got them watered? Yep, they, yep, you got. You're gonna. How many trays you got in your oven? Not. How many shelves? Two. Well, you're gonna have to do it at a time. Yeah. So you're gonna take a bit longer. So do the ones you want to do up, and then you'll have to put the other ones in after, and then cream them up. But if you've got loads of these, you don't have to cream them all up. You can keep them as they are. They keep fresh, and they go a little bit dry overnight. But when you pop your cream and your filling in, it brings them back. They come back softer. So just cream up what you want to eat, and then put the other ones away, and then have them tomorrow. And that would be the same for Sorry? 
same thing as with humans, really. You dry out over the night, but puff them up with some. Yeah, and rehydrate the next day, yeah. Thinks maybe our eggs were too runny as it was thick before the eggs went in. Did you put your eggs in slowly, Toya? I mean, our mixes are runny ish. I, if you've got the right recipe, I would still carry on and pop them in. Let me see how Boy, did, you use, did you use chicken eggs or ostrich eggs? <laughs> did you use ostrich eggs, Toya? Um, right, so I need. Uh, how long do we cook these on? It's about 20 minutes. Yeah, we'll pop these in the oven. They take around 20 minutes. So put them in your two shelves. You should have more watered up. One eighty. Make them nice. Is it looking dark now? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't does it? No, it's fine. It's just dark for me. Oh, she used extra large eggs, toy. Extra large eggs. <laughs> um, I'd still carry on then. Still, still keep going with it, because you you probably find they still puff up because the eggs are going to allow stuff to pop up anyway and uh, you just need to do it again another day with the right eggs yeah you need to specify what animal when you say eggs you say free range but you could have a lot of it could be a free range pig egg for all we know pig egg pig egg yeah a, it's what it says just keep them going yeah. it, 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 it'll be fine you might just have like they they might puff what what I would imagine you'll find with yours, yours will puff up and it might collapse back down because there's not enough structure to hold it. But then like I say, once you pipe your cream in, your cream will allow it to come back up anyway, so it'd be good. What height in the oven? What height? Um well I've just got mine, I've just spaced my shelves out. I've got one on the top shelf and one on the bottom. 180. What I might do, what you've got to try and let these cook. What time do we put them in? 20 minutes. <laughs> so I'm forgetting this. What's the time? 20, so about 20 past seven, mine are ready. So, yeah, what we might do at about 15 minute stage, I might just flip my trays around. Josie, you've got four trays, so you're going to have to put two in, cook yeah. them, and put the other two in. Yeah. It's all right. I've left my red ones, my rent trays are still out. I'm doing the good ones. And then yeah. I'll make the red yeah. ones and I'll give them to my brother. <laughs> <laughs> right, so where do we get to now? This takes longer than anything, doesn't it? Um, so now we've got them going in, so you can have a little tidy down now. Get rid of all your pans, your eggshells, everything else, and then we're going to crack on with making up some of the, the mixes for the shoe buns. And then we go through the mixes. So you want your cream out because that's an important part. Um, how many? It depends on how many you're going to do. If you're going to fill them all up, you're going to want probably okay. around a pint. Of cream, might you? I should have saved some though. Yeah, you don't have to do. You do, do what you're going to eat today and then keep back. But a pint will fill up um, about yeah about what we've done. A pint and a bit will do roughly the mix. But you've got so many. I don't know how you've got so many out of yours. So I'm assuming they're smaller than mine. The cream you go through is really weird. You look at it and you think that's loads, and the profiteroles just suck it up because it's when you think each one's like that big, that's quite a gap to fill the cream. You've got to find them. So depending on what you do, you want your um, chocolate. Yeah. Question. What? Do you, 
Well, how long do they keep once they've got cream in them? Because I can't really be bothered to cream some more tomorrow. So if I cream them all today, uh, what will happen is they go slightly soft as they stay in the cream. If you ever buy shop ones, yeah. you notice how soft they are. If you make your own, you get a little bit more crisp with them. So, but then you can just keep them uh, out, leave them out, and they go a little bit hard. But like I say, if you put the cream in in two days' time, it will bring it back. But if you're going to put the cream in, what date is your cream on? Because that's basically how long your cream lasts. So if you've got like your cream is stated on Wednesday, as long as your cakes are in the fridge, they'll be to Wednesday. But they will be a little bit softer. They don't taste as nice because they're like the liquidy sort of creamy goes into the pastry a bit too much. Twenty first, is Thursday. Yeah. So you, you cream a keep till then. So if you fill them up, but you can't be posting them. No. You can't, you can't post for. What about buttercream? Should you put that in there? Yeah, you could put buttercream in there. See, there's an option. You could put icing and buttercream. It's what you made last week. Yeah, yeah, you put... And what was in that? That was just butter icing, basically, wasn't it? So it had cho white chocolate and vanilla bean paste in it. That, and it posted... Yeah. I don't know if people were just being polite, but they said that they said it arrived intact. It's... Yeah. It's just fresh cream is a bit in yeah. there. I mean, the butter icing would probably travel, so you could, yeah. if you wanted, you don't have fresh cream, you could fill these with butter icing. That would be, as long as it's running enough to pipe, there's another option. But there's so many options with this, you don't, the standard prefer is just chocolate on top, cream inside. Do whatever you want, put anything in. I mean, like I say, I've made, I chopped up, what I did there was I chopped up an orange, which is, I apologise for because I made Tell everybody else. I tried the gelatine one and it just wasn't as good. So I chopped an orange up, cooked it down with chocolate, uh, sugar and water, a little bit of rind, and then let it set back up. And I got like a, a Jaffa cake jelly there. So I'm going to put that into my double cream and then pipe that inside and then chop it on top of the thing. So for the people now who have got the, the gelatine one, who was doing the Jaffa cake one? Oh, um, Vicky. Farvin, wasn't she? Or was it? Yeah. Yeah. Vicky Farvin, you said you had to go to Nutella, do Nutella ones. Um, if I want um, to incorporate this substance, how would yeah. I do so? Can you that, that yeah. So you could heat a little bit of that up, make it like slightly warm, and you could dip your profiteroles rolls in it instead of chocolate. Or you right, could take yeah. a spoonful of that and mix it into your double cream and whip it up. And then you'd have like a Biscoff cream. So there's your two ways of doing that one. But yeah, you could add that. If you don't want chocolate on the top, you could... Um... I'll use that alternative topping. I think I'm going to do my custard, my custard whip in the middle. I was going to maybe put marshmallow in it. You've ever seen that marshmallow whip paste you can get? Uh, yeah. We're in Waterloo's at the moment, so I couldn't find any, and I didn't really want to go traipsing around all the shops, so that will have to wait. Yeah, that's, that's the problem at the moment, getting the ingredients. Right, so I'm going to make up a, a mini chocolate ganache. So for everybody that's going to use this as a topping, this is what we do. Um, you should remember from when we did the chocolate mousse cakes, when we made the, um, the little... What are they called? The little Shoe balls. buns. No, no, the little balls, chocolate balls. Ruffle. Okay, well, no. What we put on oh. the garden donuts? No. Truffles. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you want you want some cream? So that's um half. That's half a pint. So I'm gonna take. I'm not gonna make as much because I'm I'm gonna do some different ones. So take um if take about half of your carton. Pop that in the microwave or put it on the stove. Either way. So cream this, I'm just going to pop mine in the microwave. Basically, you just want to warm this cream up, then we're going to put your chocolate drops in there. And we're making a chocolate ganache. Ganache, that's the word. So we're going to make a ganache for the top, because personally, I don't like doing the hard chocolate. The hard chocolate ones always set too hard. I like it soft and sticky. So this will give you a soft and sticky one. If you put it in the microwave, though, keep an eye on it. Do it like 30 seconds at a time. And put it on the stove, just 
put it in a little pan, bring it to the boil, and then we just chuck the chocolate in and whisk it up. And this would be a topping. So we get the toppings done first. So I'm going with, like I said, chocolate and ash. Uh, Josie had the Biscoff. So if you add something like that, you can literally just warm a little bit up in another bowl. But don't do that yet because you don't want that sticking up. But you just pop that in the microwave for like sort of 20 seconds. Give it a little stir up. Basically, you want it just that little bit runny. So when you dip your profiteroles in it. Right there. Okay, so there's my cream there, my little bowl. You can see the steam coming off of that. I'm just going to chuck my chocolate in there. I'm kind of not measuring it because this is just like the toppings. I'm going to put probably... Um, the single cream, okay? Yeah, single cream's fine for this. Yeah, it's just the cream because you're just making... Uh, how much? Um, if you're doing the whole lot... That's a cap. <laughs> we hear the cap. Yeah, so I put um, about a quarter of a pint in mine there. But if you're doing everything in chocolate, you'll probably need about the half a pint. And then I'll put a couple of handfuls of sugar in there. Not sugar. It's called chocolate. A couple of handfuls of chocolate went in there. And I've done it in a see-through thing so you can just see. So you can see all my chocolate there and it's just melting in the hot cream. I'm just going to leave that for about a minute. Then we whisk that up and then I end up with a beautiful chocolate dipping sauce. And that's going to be my topping. And he my... says hers is looking awesome in the oven, growing well. Yeah. yeah How do you know when they're cooked? Because I made so many, they might be smaller. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll check them at quarter past, because none of this should be done before quarter past. Yeah, I can't see. We're, we're, we're... Right, you might want to... If everybody, what's the time? We all put them in around the same time, do we? Ten past. So give it a couple more minutes, and then I'm just going to flip mine around, turn it around, just so that I can uh, do. So your oven's on 180, Josie, yeah? Yeah. 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 So I turn mine around, though, because they're looking pretty cooked. They're looking pretty cooked today, because yours are smaller, aren't they? Right, okay, yeah. Go on, flip yours around. So if they're looking kind of brown... And you've got a few trays in there, you just need to, because uh, obviously the hot is at the top of the oven. In an ideal world, we'd have a nice big massive oven like I have at work, and it's a whole heat the same the whole way through. So life's a lot easier in uh, commercial kitchens than it is in, you know, like a private one. No. Je uh, Mark James, this is rising well. Yeah. What was that note, Josie? Collapsed. What, the bottom ones or the top ones? Well, I've swapped them over. Yeah, just do it and then get your oven shut back up. It'll be fine. Will they wise back up again then? Hopefully. <laughs> going to be little biscuit fingers. <laughs> right, so there's my little chocolate. Now I'm just going to whisk that in slowly. My cream looked like it had a bit of a skin on top. Shall I pour it away and start again? Oh. No, just mix it in. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because you're just going to just chuck your chocolate in there. I don't know if it's, it might have, it might have burnt. How do I know if it's burnt? Uh, what's the bottom of the pan look like? And you'll have little black bits in there. Oh, no, no, it's not burnt, burnt, no. Uh, you're right. Just chuck your chocolate in and just let your chocolate melt into it naturally. I mean, I've got to be honest, I don't, I shouldn't really, we did this the other day, didn't we? Mm. How much chocolate in weight for 300 millilitres of cream? So that's one of those. 300 is one of them. Yeah, they're 300. So what was the that's actual proper, you see, I guess all this is, this is chef, this is chef stuff. We just like chuck it in and do it. So you want 200 grams for half a... What's that, 300, is it? Yeah, that's 300. Yeah, you, yeah, you want about 250 grams of chocolate then. Check that in. If you're doing the whole one. See, there's mine now. Mary. Hiya, Mary. Mum's watching. Mum's in the house. She? Somewhere. 
Right, so now there, and I'm just going to stick that to the side now and just let that go. So I'm going to do two toppings. I'm doing this, and my favourite, I'm just doing icing sugar on top, because the icing sugar looks... So chocolate, you're dipping chocolate to the side. Right, everybody else, if you've got a couple of trays, it might pay now just to flip your trays around. But can you do it as quick as possible? Try not to keep your oven open too long. Just whoosh, whoosh, and do it. Keep the heat in there. There you go. That's me done. Ten seconds. That's what we should be. Yeah. I have a chocolate dipping sauce done. Right, so I'm just going to rattle through some creamy things that I'm... Um, think you might be interested in putting in them um, and then I'll go back over them again if anybody wants to know anything I'll go back over it but if I keep stopping too long it's going to take forever to get through it but if you message the wife and then I'll answer you back up so anyway like I said definitely everybody needs to have that bit of chocolate ganache and I'm going with icing sugars on the other ones because when you sprinkle the icing sugar on Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why are you putting icing sugar on them? Look, there, there's the icing sugar ones. That's not a profiterole. That's a sole yeah. skin for a profiterole. It's nice. It's so short. I'd feel so short changed if I bought a profiterole and didn't have What are you doing? So, for those who are doing the coffee buns, you want a little bit of granule coffee. So take some coffee granules, just empty them into a little pot. And what you're going to do is pop about a teaspoon of water into the coffee literally that is all you need we just want to if you've got granules or powder we just want to dilute it a bit and use hot water as well so i've got the kettle on there coffee in there but this is going to be the coffee shoe bun people As you can see, you're going to have to keep me a bit of time here because I'm making about five different sort of fillings up at the moment. If you're using chocolate, very important to poison test it before you put it in the pot. You very important. To... Yeah, very important. Mm, I'm not sure about this. I'll have to have some more. Shuba. Shuba and chocolate. If your chocolate hasn't melted, if your cream wasn't hot, hot enough. Well, you, if, if it's not quite melted, just put the heat on again for that. But just stand there with it. Don't go and burn that chocolate because you ruin it. You just need to put a little bit more heat in it. Just put it back on and whisk it up while it's going. I think Joe's is eating all that chocolate. Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> coffee powder, <laughs> teaspoon of hot water into it. Apparently there's three shots there. That's it. There's hardly, if you look in there, hardly any water in there at all. We want to just get the flavour. We don't want it too watery. Then you want ice and sugar into your coffee mix. Again, I'm just guessing here because it depends how many you're covering. I'm just making a little bit up. Are they burning? So you take your icing mm. sugar into the coffee and then a little tiny bit of water again. Add the water gradually. If you put too much in, you just end up with running the stuff straight away. Oh, I use too much dark chocolate. It tastes healthy. Yuck. <coughs> How many people were doing coffee anyway? 
Excellent uh, shout out, I know. Chat out if you're doing coffee. And you just take the icing sugar and a bit of warm water, mix it up, and then that's your coffee dipping. So this is another topping we're doing here at the moment. I'm going to go for all the toppings. Oh, it's 20 past. 20 past, is it? Right. Everybody have a look at your profiteroles. rolls. Two guns. There's, there's my coffee icing. Look how dark that is. If you're having coffee, you've got to be able to taste it. I don't want like some whatever. And you just keep that on the side and we can use that to dip in. That's two fillings, uh, two toppings done. Right, everybody go and check your profiteroles. How do you know if they're done? Right, you need to... Right, there's mine. They're looking done. When they look done, you can see them, they're like very hollow <laughs> and they're, they're very firm and stable. All that they're, um, it's kind of hard to explain. How would you, how would you explain it? Um, basically, a nice even brown colour all over. And the, the, what we need to do, when they get to this point now, everybody's, I can't quite see, yeah, they're, they're kind of looking like it. Are they nice and brown all over? They feel yeah. firm? What about the bottom? Yeah, turn the bottom and Yep. Yeah. Right, so if everybody's at this kind of stage now, it basically is self-explanatory. If you think they look cooked, they're kind of cooked. And we're around the 20, 25 minute time. But what we need to do now is pop on the stove and you need to take some, we need to put some holes into them. Right. So I'm now using a skewer, uh, not a skewer, a steel. Um, you want like a, a whole, uh, basically what we need to do now is stick that into it and let the steam out. We need to get the steam out of our, this could be a little bit of hot. You want to pop the steam in, I made a sort of a, a hole in there. Can everybody see that? And then you should see a load of heat come out. So make a hole. The bottom. On the, yeah, basically a, a hidden hole. You need to do that on every one. Turn them upside down, and then we're going to put them back in the oven for another five minutes. Right. And this way, it has, it'll help the insides cook, because you might find, so I'm popping a little hole in there. You could use the back of a spoon, yeah, something a like that. A anything that will sort of do it. You just yeah. want to dig a little hole in. Yeah, is that thick enough? to? Yeah, so you want to dig that little hole in, and you'll see the steam come out. And then turn them upside down. Well, I'll turn them up. And then we're going to pop these back in the oven. As you'll probably notice now, they're starting to feel a little bit puffy, even that being out of the oven. Now, if you've got shoe buns, this is just the perfetta rolls. If you've got shoe Stop. buns, they're going to take a little bit longer because it's obviously a bigger mix. Hi, um, recover. Yeah, they will when we put cream in them. I think I'm going to need to use two, though. Look, they're too small. I'm going to have to, like, just sandwich two of them together. You can't split that. It's like splitting an atom. That'd be fine. Right, so I've done all my profiteroles. rolls. I've stuck a hole in them. They've all gone back in here. We're going to give them another five minutes. And what that's doing is, because they puff up like that, and they keep all the heat inside and the steam. And if you don't take that out and then dry them back out, you'll end up with soggy middles. So if we do this, we'll dry them out that little bit more. Um, so it's 22 past. We'll check them again in about, in about five minutes. Yeah, if you're doing shoe buns, Jackie Pan was doing shoe buns, yours are probably going to take a bit longer, probably another five, six, seven, eight minutes on top of ours. And the eclairs take about another two, three minutes over a perfetta roll. This is just that bit I'm not going to be able to cut that in half. Look at it. I tell you what, you wait until you don't... don't. When we pop the cream inside later, it's going to go. Do yours went like that yeah. from that? Inside, I can't cut that in half. It's literally like two millimeters <laughs> thick. 
You won't need to cut it in half. Trust me, we just dig a little hole in the end and you put the cream in and the cream will pop it up for you. Lily Lou's having to pop it up. Yeah, egg. that could be something to do with the egg, see. But keep them cooking. If they haven't puffed up at all, um, yeah, keep them in the oven. Make sure they're properly cooked, and we might be able to um, sandwich them together. Because I'm imagining they're looking a little bit like Josie's ones there. Jackie's said hers are not quite brown yet. Yeah, yours going to take a little bit longer because we've done, especially if you've got the five, they're going to like, because you've got to cook them. Obviously, it's a bigger uh, a bigger thing, you know. If you look at the pit rolls we've done in our mixes, we got like sort of 16 to 20 out of it, and you only got five, so you've got that massive mix. I mean, I've got a couple of shoe buns in there, and they're going to take another five minutes. Yours is going to be about another 10 minutes. Chris Austin said, Did you say flip them? Turn them upside yeah. down, so stick a hole in them, let that steam out, turn them upside down, put them back in the oven five minutes. When they go back in, should they be with the, the whole side up or down? Yeah, it doesn't really matter, but if you just turn them over, you just cook the bottom a little bit more. That's that's the reason we're doing that, because sometimes the bottoms can be a little bit paler. Mark James said, my lemon cheesecake filling is the dog's fanglies. Oh, right, of course, Mark's on to his uh, lemon cheesecake filling. How's everyone's ganache tasting? Uh, James Davis has put loads of rum in his. Now give it to the kids, James. Yeah, I'm not even going to taste my ganache. I know it's oh, going to be I think he's just stuck to the paper. What? Paper? How many yeah. sticks to the paper? I don't know. Um, get a slice underneath and just ease them off. We shouldn't stick to the paper. I've never had that before. You didn't use newspaper, did you? <laughs> <laughs> My profiteroles are all deflated now. Have you whipped the cream yet? No, we're, we're, we're literally concentrating on fillings, uh, toppings for the moment, and we're we're at the point where we're going to need to start taking your fitter rolls and stuff out, so I don't really want to go into the green part and then everybody burn their fitter rolls. Toys are stuck to the paper as well. Yeah, toys might have the issue of... Uh, what paper does everybody use? Every a really decent parchment paper. Perhaps you need to send that Yeah. Um, Vicky said, what she meant to grease it? No, 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 because it's a cake. You, can, Vicky, can you get like a slice under it? And then uh, it should just naturally come off. Because it's basically like a, like a pancake kind of batter. It, it's, no, you, you don't need no grease in this whatsoever. If you look at mine, look, I just do that and they just slide in. It's... I'm taking me profit of rolls out now because mine are done. I can tell there. Uh... Oh, let me just pop. Well, he said it was a top and bottom sort of paper. No. No. All right, so there's my profit of rolls. Turn them all back up the right way. So there, they should have like, they should feel quite firm now. Now we've got them out, they should feel almost biscuity like because you've taken that steam out. They're like Yorkshire puddings. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, you could have a Yorkshire pudding. The toy and cookies are both stuck. Now we just need to take your fitter rolls out now, give the eclairs a couple minutes longer because I've got some in there, and then the uh, shoe buns and have sort of five minutes over that. Um, can we, the girls that have got it stuck, can you not get a slice under to move it? I don't understand how the papers. Dave's going to finish up. Got to go down the house to get my dinner. I said barbing. Um. Couple of the uh, eclairs done and ready. Now, when you take these out of the oven, you might notice they just go a little bit flat. That's probably because maybe we've taken whoever's done it, might have just taken them out a minute or two too soon. But don't worry, because when you get the cream in, 
they pump back up. But as long as we add that hole in there and then we've not got like a damp inside because it just it makes it a bit sort of gooey or something like that. Is that one of your broker, one of your thin ones? And they're so skinny. So pull it, break it in half. What's it look like inside? Is there a pocket? That. So if you press it, there's not a pocket. Yeah, just squashes. Oh, Does it taste? Still, still chewy. <laughs> I think they will experiment those ones. Like, right, because you could start popping your other trays in now. They taste like pancakes that aren't quite cooked. Actually, that's a good way. Another way, they will taste pancakey, like, because it's. They are very pancake tasting until you get all the other flavours in. That's what makes. Your right, so everybody now probably should have their profiteroles out. Um, and I've got mine just cooling down on the side over there. I'm just going to check my the rest of my eclairs now because they're probably done. So if you're doing eclairs, what about the shoe buns? No, because they're going to be long now. There you go, Mark. Have another one. <laughs> right, so I've got there's my um, rest of my eclairs. I'm taking them off, they look nice and Evenly, evenly coloured all over and add that crispy feel to them. There's a couple of shoe buns I've done. Woo! Mark! Um, they need slightly longer, but now I'm going to pop the hole in these, because I didn't do these at the time, so I'm just going to let the steam out of these. So, Jackie Pan, if yours are looking nice and brown, you need to pop your hole in. But yours might take a bit longer, because you had quite large ones. I'll pop this steam all in with two, two of them. So I'll give you an idea on the size difference for Jackie. There's my little profiterole there, and then there's my uh, shoe bun. It's probably four times the size of the profiterole, and they're not far off of being cooked now. So I'll put holes in them, and they're just going to go back in for another five minutes to dry out. Right, so hopefully, can we have a thumbs up from everybody? Are we starting to get... Are we Lee starting Gilbert. to get... No abuse, please, this week, Lee. I haven't seen your Battenberg. My Battenberg? Oh, when? I got eaten. He get, no, as in Lee gave us abuse for our bat Battenbergs last week. Oh, right, yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's, he hasn't seen my little crusty uh, fingers. Right, so can we have a thumbs up from everybody? Has everybody got all their uh, bits and bobs out of the oven now? Probably just a few buns we've in. I've had two thumbs up, I don't know where they're from. Two thumbs up. Toya and um, um, Vicky, have we got them off the tray yet? You can take a little fish slice and just try to ease them off Darren's underneath. Darren's done, Mark's done. Darren's done, Mark's I've done. I've got a couple of thumbs, but I don't know who they're from. Chris has done. Chris has done. Oh, that's Vicky. No. no, Vicky Austin, no? No, Vicky. No, Vicky. Yes. Oh, Vicky Fargo, isn't that? Okay. So, Vicky oh, and Lee Gilbert, Fingy. he's in. He's laughing. Lee Gilbert's laughing. See, Lee <laughs> Gilbert doing it. You're doing it, Lee. <laughs> yeah, so, them girls, try and get that. Oh, I can't Toya, quite get. Said, nah. They're not coming off. Nah. Does she have issues with the things because you put too much egg in? You use extra large eggs. Uh, Vicky Fargo, yep, but a bit flat. Well, as long as they've got a bit of puff in them, we can get cream in and then there. Mark lovely. James is in. I'm going to make a special dessert with the bits. Good idea. That's toy. Yeah, you'll be able to. We'll, we'll figure something out you can do. Alison Garnet's ready. Right, so basically everybody should be having them out now. Gonna... Right, so there's my shoe buns. You've got a nice little tap. Jackie Pan's are nice and brown. Yeah, so Jackie Pan, stick a hole in, Have get back in the oven. Them? Yeah, but they're hot, but <laughs> nice big hole in there, let that steam in. Ow. So Jackie Pan, pop yours in for, stick a hole back in for another two, three minutes, just to let that steam out. All right, so here's my selection of stuff. 
tray has to come down. So I've got the fitter rolls there, uh, eclairs there. You see them. And then we've got the fitter rolls, which are about eight, ten of them. And then I've got the slightly bigger shoe buns. So that's kind of what we should be looking at. Shoe buns, Mark. An actual pastry chef, you might have something more similar to this, which is <laughs> Rusty Witch's fingers, which are barely 3D. These are literally 2D, 2D cooking, and then little dollops again, little flat dollops. The dollops are going to be all right. Now, looking at them, I would probably say we need another couple more minutes in the oven, but I I'm not sure about. I didn't see how you piped them out. I don't know whether. Did you press down when you piped them out? No, but did I, did three, piped... I, did, I did three lines. You did three. Like uh, I'm... You, did, oh. you did just one line. Oh. The three lines. Okay. You, you pressed it down then, I would imagine. Where you've done the three, you've kind of. I'll just glue two of them together. Like I'll just yeah. put the cream in. That will work. You can put the, the cream and the thing in it. Right. Okay, Vicky Pardon says, What do I do with the Nutella? Right. Okay. Yeah, so let's spoon. Spoon. Okay. We should all have chocolate dipping. I have. I don't know what happened to it. Should have put the coffee. Oh, yeah. Mark said if he puts hobnobs in the filling, will it go soft? No. So you're going to put hobnobs, right, Mark? Hobnobs in your filling. You want to crumble them up, get the back of a rolling pin or a spoon, put them in a little bowl, just bash them down and end up with crumbs. And then just pop that inside the mm -hmm. cheesecake and then just pipe it in. And then, like I said before, if you put <laughs> chocolate on top of it, like dipping chocolate, on the top of your profit rolls, and then just sprinkle a bit of the crumb on top of that as well. So you'll have a double side. You'll have your cheesecake in it. And that, that will work. Mark right. said three lines. Were you on shot replacement powder? <laughs> Right, we have fillings, uh, toppings, chocolate. I got coffee and icing sugar. That's the three I'm going for. If you wanted to do, uh, if you haven't got the chocolate, Vicky, you can do the Nutella, and you can melt that down for about ten seconds to soften it up, and you can use Nutella instead of that. But what I would do now is whisk some cream up, and put Nutella and icing sugar in the cream, and have a chocolate cream, and that can go inside your profiteroles. rolls. <clears throat> Right. So now, cream-wise, the standard cream. You just tip your cream into into your mixing bowl. Obviously, I'm doing a few different ones here, so it's going to be a little bit trickier for me. But most people are going to do the same sort of flavour, and to fill all of them. The fitter rolls there. To fill all of that, it's going to take at least a pint of cream, if not more. So if you're filling everything up, you will need to, as you can see, I've got a reasonable amount of cream. So we have cream, and I would put icing sugar in that. Don't put granulated sugar. The icing sugar makes it just so much better. And that is your standard Chantilly cream, they call it. It's basically sugar and fresh cream. I put about four. About four, te four hit teaspoons of ice and sugar has gone in that. Now you can just whisk. Sorry. Sorry? If I'm using custard, do I still need to put the sugar in? Um, it will help. Yeah, definitely help. Because how sweet, the custard's not normally that sweet, is it? No, so that there, standard, that there is a standard um, Chantilly cream. So you can just pop that straight into that. Now, into this, you can add your different flavours. So if you want to put three, four, five teaspoons of Nutella in that to give you a chocolate cream, brilliant. You could put cocoa powder into that and that'll give you like a cocoa chocolatey cream. You could do what Josie's doing. She's doing um, custard. So she's got some fandangled Madagascan custard and she's going to make like what they call like a creme on fresh type. It's like a French thing. And she's going to put custard in with the cream and a bit of ice and sugar. Um, I would probably suggest again about 
five, six teaspoons of your custard, whip yeah. it up, get it yeah. to the peaks and, and taste it. And if you can get more custard into it, fold it in at the end when it's whisked up in cream. Now um, you could put coffee yeah. into this. Again, go back to how I did the, the coffee there. So single you get some coffee. Okay. No, we need double cream. Oh. You can't put single cream, single cream will not whip up. Okay. You just got single cream. Alison, go on up. Single cream won't whip up. Have we got any spare? I've got some, some spare if you want some. Do you want me to go around to Lomar? Do you want me to pop a carton on your door? Okay, I've got one spare. Okay, I'll go and drop it over and leave it outside the door. Yeah. How much, how, so I put how much custard in this now? Right, so have you got, have you got just your double cream there ready, yeah? And uh, sugar. And sugar, right, so put about five, six, just, just chuck it in, just yeah, just like that. Chuck it in, and then you want to whisk that up to like whisk cream. So you want like the, the texture that we can pop in the piping bag, stick in the hole, and then pipe into the cream. Oh, that's good custard. Oh yeah, it is. So when you whisk yours up, when it's like peaky, have a taste of it. If it needs more custard, you should be able to fold a bit more in. But don't make it too runny, otherwise you'll never get it to stay inside your confiteroles. Right. Still, this whatever custard. everybody does. Yeah. This custard's thicker than the cream at the moment. Look at it. Well, it's made good, out of then, double. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> Alison, you should have double cream now. The wife's just come back in. <laughs> See, what about this? It's service, isn't it? Just <laughs> drop double cream out of her door. <sighs> that's good. I think I need right, some so. more chocolate, guys. Can you drop us some chocolate around? Oh, oh yeah, I'll run around and drop it. Got those questions right. Um, my loafers have a hole in them, so have I have to order a new pair of shoes today? That's not. How much icing cream in the sh cream? You want about, I've got, um, what did I have in the end? And it's putting Cointreau in as well. Yeah, okay, I had a pint of, I had basically a pint of cream, and I put about four heat teaspoons of ice and sugar, and if you're putting Cointreau in it, just put a dash in, Whisk it up, taste it. Um, you just got to be careful you don't add too much liquid that it doesn't whip back up. So that would be that one. And again, if you taste it and you need a bit more sweeter, you just add a bit more sugar to it, a bit more ice and sugar to it. So Barbie said, do I whip the cream before or adding the before? Put the Nutella, the Nutella into the cream, whip it up together. And then again, when it gets to that stage at the end, if it doesn't taste quite Nutella enough, you can add a bit more you're not telling just stir it in and then you might have like a double a double um sort of like a dark chocolate and a lighter chocolate in it and it'll be fine because it'll look swirly hello Stephen Hogg. oh yeah Stephen Hogg. can i, oh, well, can I Stephen. Right. Yes, Stephen. if you want if you want to make a chocolate flavor how do you do that chocolate flavor so if you're doing nutella like we've just gone through you just pop that into that mix if you want to do yeah. cocoa, which is very nice, you just put yeah, cream. Yeah, cocoa's not chocolate. Yeah, but the cocoa gives the better, it actually tastes better than the chocolate. Now, if you add biscoff, you could put cream, ice and sugar, and spoonfuls of biscoff in. Ooh, yeah. If you want to add a bit of rum to this, you can put some rum in. Just go careful, don't add too much alcohol. So that, because it's quite strong, you're putting the alcohol in that, you're not cooking it off like when you're cooking. So that's that. So any other sort of flavours anybody's got? I, I went through the coffee, didn't I? So you want coffee granules diluted in a little tiny bit of hot water, and then you can just chuck coffee straight into that, whisk it up, and you can have a coffee cream. Lemon? No. Um, yeah, if you wanted lemon, you could ice and sugar cream, bit of lemon zest, and squeeze a bit of lemon juice into that, and you could have a lemon cream. There's, it's so versatile what you can do with cream. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and whisk my cream up.
So, whipped cream. Now, last whipped cream. Last time we done that, it fell on my. Yeah, that, there you go. That's done. So that's what you want. Last time it all fell out. So I got whipped cream now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide mine in half. I've got two bowls, and this is a great way of doing it if you're doing two flavours. Get it to that stage there, divide it in half, and then you can do your two. So Josie, oh no, you had all your custard in the one, didn't you? But if you're doing that like that, and then for my, which I apologise for again for my Jaffa cake once, I kind of screwed up there because I tried, tried it in a week with a jelly and it didn't quite work properly. So I needed to make like an orange jam basically. So I've got chopped oranges that I cooked earlier today, which I should have shown everybody, really sorry. Loads of sugar, just boiled it down until it reduced down to a sugar, and I had a little bit of hot water to make it. And I'm just going to chuck that straight in to my cream. So I've got like an orange cream, and I'm just going to stir that in so it'll be nice and sticky. You know, I've still got nice peaky cream, and if you can see it all, it's got like chunks of orange and stuff in there, so it's like a Jaffa cake cream. So that's one. Um, but my other one, I got the plain cream there. I am gonna put, I'm gonna put two spoonfuls. Oh, I'm gonna go with biscoff. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm going with biscoff. So I've got my biscoff there which is like a biscuit paste. I'm just going to take two heaps of that. Again, I'm not worried with mixing this in like, um, like purely totally whipped in because it, it looks nice when you get the two-tone sort of look to it. So I'm going to add biscuity bits in there with the whipped cream. And then I'm stirring this in. When I'm adding mixes here, I'm stirring it because I don't want to mix this anymore. So don't use your this part. Now, you could put in, if you didn't want to put cocoa powder in or you didn't have Nutella, you could put in a bit of your topping. You know, your, your ganache that we made earlier, you could put a bit of that in there just to, that would work. So now I'm just stirring in my biscoff. And I've got like um, a nutty cream. Stirring it in just stops you over beating it. Now if you look there, it looks like we've got like an ice cream. Like um, one of them fancy... No. Looks like one of the fancy sort of Italian ice creams. But that's just literally the cream and the biscoff and the ice and sugar. So that's that one. Did you see that, Josie? Me no. biscoff, because you're doing that. Yum. So that literally was the cream when it was whipped up. I just put a couple of spoonfuls of biscoff in and just stirred it in so that you can still see all of the, the biscoff. Now, when you've got your creams, this is when you take your creams now and pop them into your piping bag. So you might have one cream, you might have two. I'm not sure where everyone has got. So this is what makes it slightly hard doing things like this, is I've got lots of people doing loads of different things, so you kind of got to jiggle and jaggle it around to get everybody... It's gone really quiet on it. It's gone really quiet, so I'm assuming everybody's kind of Mom getting all their stuff together. 
Did you whip the biscoff, or did you put the biscoff in afterwards? Um, you can whip it up with it, but just whip your cream up, and then just add it to it, and then you get that nice ice creamy sort of look to it. I mean, if Where you want to put it in, you can put it in now, and then you'll end up with a totally brown cream. Yeah. But it's, it's just so it's crunchy off you. I like to see Which two one? tones. Wait, what's that? Biscoff? Nah, don't use the crunchy stuff. I know you ain't seen that. Just go with the standard. Does she mean just biscuits crunched up? Right, so now, if you've got creams ready, Nutella creams, coffee creams, plain Chantilly creams, fill up your piping bags. We might be ready to go in a minute. I'm not sure. It depends how quick you are. Mark said, what size nozzle? Any size nozzle, doesn't matter here, because he's just using it to dig a hole in the bottom and pipe in. To be fair, smaller the better, because we're just literally filling up here. There's no way. Um... Right, Toya, what are you doing? Are you still going ahead and doing your... I think she's gone. Oh, she's gone, is she? Right, so I've got two piping bags. Hot oh, where is the piping cream? Gonna go inside the preferred rolls in a second. Um, Shoot, um, oh, Toy's there. She's still there. Toy's there. Did any of yours sort of come off in the end? Did they sort of come off when you took them out the oven? Did they dry? Right there. That's for the cream then. Jeez. Right, so I'm putting my second bag of cream in. Jaffa cake cream. Mm. That's good. Mm. Jaffa cake cream is good. No, it's nice. Right, so I have toppings ready. I've got a couple of kinds of that. I have two kinds of creams ready. I'll let everybody catch up. <laughs> People are getting annoyed. Why? Because you didn't say you've got to pipe them into your big buns. The big buns? The booby, yeah. Oh, shoe buns. All right, shoe buns. Oh, my hands, my shoe buns. Okay, so Toy said they are split, but my cream with salted caramel, vanilla, and biscoff tastes amazing. That sounds good. <laughs> Even if they're split, see, we can do. You can sandwich these together. It's all about the taste. You're not selling them, so you haven't got to send them to whatever. It's just if they taste good. I mean, as we've had with the other things we've done, you know, not everything has been perfect, the chocolate juice cakes and stuff, but it's all about whether you, do you enjoy eating it. I'm just having a bit of fun. Right, so I'm clearing down a bit of space now so I can uh, get prepped up to do the next stage. My, my profiter rolls have cooled down now, so they'll be ready to go. I'm not too sure about the shoe buns. Shoe buns, another shot. The shoe buns. <laughs> Scoff didn't work. The what? It looks like scrambled egg. Really? It's sweat. Ah, uh, you've, you've blown the cream. You've gone too far with the cream. It oh, looks man. like scrambled egg. You've yeah, it does. It. What do I do now? Um, have you got any more cream? Got more custard, which is mainly cream. This is mainly cream. So I try and rescue it with this. Right. So, did your custard cream come out all right? Yeah. Yeah, custard cream's good, right? And you got no more whip. You got no more whipping cream left, no? 
right, take a spoon, don't whisk it this time, put a little bit in at a time, this might work, it might not, I don't know. But you want to try and dilute, normally if you've over whipped your cream a little bit like that, what we can do is add some more double cream to it and then whip it back up. But you've, you've taken your cream too far, see, if you carry it on, you actually end up with butter. Ooh, that'll be alright, Biscoff butter. Yeah, that's, that's basically how they make butter, is they, you know, cream is, it's churned, it's churned, it's churned, it's churned. Keeps going and going and going, and then the milky part comes off one way, and the, the fatty part comes off the other. Oh, right. So you end up with like blocks of butter, and yeah. then you end up with like a milky water, which is buttermilk, which they use to make soda bread and stuff. There you go. So that's that's the process of that. <laughs> and if you basically, I mean, uh, when we were chefing, we used to do like you know massive bowls of it. If you walked away, you'd come back and you would just have water and like a massive chunk of butter. The water would be going everywhere and up the mixes, and you just get bollocked by the chef. He's obviously wasted loads and loads of cream. Right, how's that going? Is that coming back? Coming back, but it's not, it's going to need whipping to, you can't pipe that. Yeah, I'm not sure you're going to be able to whip that up, see, because even though that's thick, what you need to do with that then is use that as a custard over the top. But you've still got, yeah, if you if anybody else has over whipped it, if you pop a little bit more cream into it and then slowly whip it, you can bring it back. Luby Lou said, got to go, thanks. Maybe baking powder another time. I dip them in. Use them as dipping, yeah, you can just use Cheerios in the end. Truffle mix. Yeah. Send, been... a, send a picture. Yeah, yeah. Send, a, send a picture. We'll, I'll, I'll have a look. Right, so, piping bags. I've got piping bags here with a couple of different creams. I have a couple of different toppings. And I have the fitter rolls. So pick the side that you want. Now what you can do is use, if you look there, that's the little hole I made. That is a great little way to just pop your cream in. So you basically take your cream, <laughs> Take your nozzle, poke it inside like so, so he's like right in there, and then just squeeze your cream in until he fills up. Apart from the fact I've got orange in mine, so it's taking a little bit more. And then you just fill them up like that. I use the other cream again. I've got a nice little hole there. So I'll pop, just twist them on the end there. And then I get a little. So now this would be a good one for everybody to watch. You can see he's a little bit flat. If I squeeze him down a bit more, look, you can see he's, he's, he's quite flat, that one, yeah? You can see that? So I'll take me hole. <laughs> Get that in there, and then I'll pipe that in. Can we see him shooting up? <laughs> there we are, and now we've got a full perfetta roll. Again, hold there. You can literally see him filling up. Like I said, they take a lot of cream. He's that a bit of orange stuff there. Now. <laughs> oh. So the orange one not work great purely because of the of orange in the nozzles. <laughs> Right, so that was a few profiteroles there. Yeah. 
So now we go for an eclair. Now, if you've got thin ones like Josie had, and they don't look like they're going to split in half, you can literally just put two on top of each other. <laughs> put your cream in the middle, you just stick the two on top. It'd be fine. It'd be fine. But what I like to do with eclair, there's two ways of doing it. I'll show you both ways. So now you can take your eclair and you can just gently cut down there until we half it. Take your eclair, half it like that, and then we create that. And then we just pipe in there. So you pipe cream into that like that. And then we just dip that in the chocolate. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it there, if we look at that one there, we can see that one there is quite, he's fat either end and he's gone really thin in the middle. Okay. So what I do there is take the same cream, go to the end, make, um, take a little hole at the end. Enough to get your nozzle in. Pop your nozzle in there and then just pipe that with cream. And if you can see, if I get it at the right angle, you might see that just pump up. If I can get it at the right Do angle. You need existing holes. Are you using the existing holes for all of them, Gaz? Yeah. Yeah, use the existing holes, and then now you can see now I've got a, a nice uh, pumped up one there. But to be fair, with the eclairs, I personally prefer if we cut down. Again, like that. And then if you look inside, you can see we've got a nice uh, sort of doughy like thing in there, but that. That's, you can see it's all cooked like bread. If we hadn't put them holes in, put them back for five minutes, you could end up with all that being tacky and sticky. And that's what makes a crappy one. Yeah, it's probably just come out that too, bit too soon. Bloody orange, I should have chopped it. It's like sticking right on the end of the nozzle. <laughs> Right, so. Helen said, eight pm on Saturdays, we should do a clap for Gary Pyman Cox for keeping us fair. So I have that so far, <laughs> and now I'm going to do a shoe bun before I run out of the Shoe bun's a shoe bun. Shoe bun. So I've got a nice big hole there. I don't think mine are going to pump up. <laughs> your profit rolls will. I can see your profit rolls going to pump up, not a problem. So shoe bun. And again, two bun. <laughs> right. These take way more cream. I've got all that cream left in there. That'll do one bun. Because <laughs> if you imagine when you go to the shop, you actually do see, you do get a lot of cream in it. To be fair, that wasn't even enough in that one. And this is, uh, what one do we do here? I do chocolate. I was at the um, Biscoff. Oh, Biscoff, yeah. <laughs> right, so I've done sort of a little bit of each there, so everybody could, whoever's doing what, should have an idea of, of what they should be sort of ended up with. And then now you want to take your, your dippings. Right, so my icing sheet, my coffee, because we've taken so long. It's gone a little bit hard, so I'm just going to pop that in the microwave for like 10 seconds. And it just, just brings it back. Sorry? Is, your, is the sound gone funny for other people or just me? Um, I don't know, everything's fine, isn't it? Cracking. Cracking, are we fine there? I don't know. Any sound issues? I'm not on sound. Don't oh, ask people. Oh. Right, so I've melted my coffee icing down. You 
you can you can dip it. You can literally just turn it over, dip it in, or you can just spoon it over the top and smooth it around. Sometimes the smoothing it around is the easier option. Just pop it in the middle, a couple of teaspoons. Wales Terry said it's been going funny this end, but largely okay. So there's a coffee one done. Helen's okay. No sound to show for her. Um, I'm about to die of in that. So then I got my chocolate, so literally these ones, the fit rolls are a bit easier to dip. So just dip it in. So you dip it, turn it upside down, dip it, take them out below that. See, that just won't set up because that's how like an ash. It'll go harder, but it'll stay sticky hard. We don't, we don't want, um, we don't like it too hard. <laughs> Actually, that sounds a bit wrong, doesn't it? We don't like our chocolate a, a bit. We don't like it too hard on chocolate. Right? So there's them ones. What have you got on that round one there? The big one? Uh, that's the coffee. Oh, what's it called? Shoe bun. Oh, the shoe bun. Okay. Have another one. And then the eclairs. If you had a longer pot, I want to put it in that one, being sensible for that. You could dip the eclairs, but you can still just run it over the top. Just take a little teaspoon because it's a great consistency. This oh, it's beautiful. I love my chocolate. And then just spoon a bit over. Let it all run down. It doesn't matter if it goes everywhere. We're not fussed with stuff like that, are we? It's all gone very quiet. My um, nozzle won't fit in my hole, so I'm just cutting them instead. <laughs> okay, well, you yeah. Which okay. one are you cutting? My potato rolls. You can actually, got got, if you've got the pointy nozzle, you can use the nozzle as like a little cutter anyway. But you can cut, yeah, I should show, should show people that one. You don't have to do, um, I've got some more profit rolls left. Yeah, if you want to take a profit roll and don't want to do the whole, because you can make like little mini, just, just saw it in half. Yeah. Pop your cream in. There's plenty of options and ways of doing it. There's no like hard and fast rule of, you just get a nice little, look, 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 look beautiful little cavity in there. Nice cream in. This Jaffa cake cream literally does not work. Looks really nice, but the orange is getting stuck in the nozzle. Should have thought of that. Who's getting proper messy? I'm getting covered in chocolate and biscoff and <laughs> everything. My biscoff cream, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. It's kind of been abandoned now. Yeah, that's once you over whipped it, if you. You struggle. But you got enough with the other creams, yeah? Uh, I'll give it a go. It'll probably be all right. Um, what can I repurpose that split cream for? Can I make it into something else rather than put it in the bin? The disco cream. Um, put it in your fridge. Buy some more cream tomorrow and just add to it. And you could actually put, um, you could put a little bit of cream in it and a tin of condensed milk. Whisk it up a little bit more. Put it in. Then you got ice cream. Okay. Um, where am I to? Right, if I show everybody where I'm at. So now we've got a split chew bun. I, I, oh, I keep saying chew buns because I just need to drink, innit? I got a split profiterole. So I didn't put a hole in, I cut that. So they look great like that. They don't have to add no things. We've got Jaffa cake ones there. I've got um, eclairs that I piped in the middle without cutting it. I personally don't like them like that. I think they look way better like that when they're cut there. We've got a coffee shoe bun there. Shoe buns. Shoe buns, I'll have another drink, but that probably could have done with a bit more cream. So Jackie Pang, when you're doing yours, it'll take quite a bit of cream. You can keep piping and piping that cream in until it shoots out. But that's what a shoe bun is. A shoe bun is 
When you bite into it, you Shuba, want black rice cream that? in it. You want black yeah. rice. That's like three or four shots. Right, I'm going to carry on piping the rest of mine. I hope everybody else is uh, on to the piping and dipping stage. Now, um, who was it who was doing cheesecake? That was Mark. So if you've got that nice silky sort of top there, now you could sprinkle on your hobnob, crunched up hobnob, and that'll look amazing on there. Um, if anybody's got almonds, I've got some almonds here. Um, I've got a little nibbed almonds. So I, I could just sprinkle some of them on. Give me a... Always said yours looks amazing. Thank you, Toya. I'm sorry, you're looking to, but we can always try again. So there, I popped a couple of little um, almonds on them ones, just for the hell of it. You know, you can put whatever you want on. Uh, right, let's do what, what cream have I got left here. Sorry, we did a big Jaffa cake one. I'm running out of cream now. <laughs> do. I'm going to fill all that up. I'm going to have a large Jaffa cake one. So I've actually run out of cream because I've had to lend it to my neighbour, Alison, because you had single cream. So I can't pipe no more in. But I'm just going to put them on my tray there. I might do a live tasting and I might get all the kids down in a minute. Let them all uh, go for it, get live reactions on what everybody thinks. Toy said my husband just looks and said, what a mess. Harsh. He won't want to eat all then, will he? Jesus, that's very good. Right, so I have run out of cream, so I can't do any more. But as you can see, they look amazing. And I've actually got three profit rolls and two eclairs left. Now, what I'm going to do with them, because I haven't filled them up, I'm just going to keep them out. Tomorrow or the next day, I'll just pop some more cream in them. They go a little bit harder over the next day or so. But once you put some liquidy cream stuff in it, it actually softens them down again. And then you can just pop your chocolate on and do whatever you need to do with them. Or you could even pop them in your freezer. You could bag them up, cover them in, some, in a plastic bag or whatever, pop them in your freezer. They will take about 10 minutes to four out. And then you could cream them up. You can even put cream in them and pop them in your freezer. That works as well, but I personally, I'm not a fan of frozen cream. Obviously, it comes out a bit texture weird like, so I prefer just to pop them in like that and then just take them out 20 minutes before you want them. There's not much room because it's very hairy and then they're ready to go. So you can do that as well. So if you had a dinner party and you wanted to do this before, and you could make these the day before, week before, put them in the freezer. You know, there's lots of options. And it takes the stress out of having to do, make them do them. But I mean, look at that, they look stunning if I do say so myself. Can't wait to taste the Jaffa cake ones. Right, so I'm done. Anybody else message me, question me? Pictures. Pictures, send them through, even yours, Toya, because then I might be able to figure out. I'm, I'm assuming Toya's your work, yours went wrong with the, the three extra large eggs, because that's almost like adding another egg in. Um, but are they. Edible. I mean, you've if you've got, are they? You know, can you? Uh, do they taste all right? Because um, you could literally sandwich them together. So if you've got eclairs, or even if you've got shoe buns, like where I've done that, you could put the two together and just pop cream in the middle and your chocolate on. If it tastes good. Mark Jane says mine are done. Tastes lovely. Cheesecake, did that go all right, Mark? Was your cheesecake, the only thing when you're doing the cheesecake... And it's knobs. Yeah, cheesecake and knobs. The only thing with doing the cheesecake is you've got to be very careful to keep that cheesecake thick enough that it stays in your... Because you wouldn't make like a normal cheesecakey mix. If I was doing a cheesecake, um, you tend to make it slightly runnier than like a whipped cream. But as long as you did it right like I told you the other day, you should have been able to do that. And then with that little sprinkle on top, that would be pretty awesome. Because then you get like the double, and then you've got the cheesecake bit in the middle as well. Um, who else was there? Um, Helen said, can you freeze them? I should have told her that, shouldn't I? Yeah, hell, you can freeze them unbaked, and then you can just take out, you know, if you just want free a day or whatever, you just pull them back out and then just pipe some cream in and stuff and chocolate and whatever. Um, who else was there that had issues? Um, Ed's wife, Vicky. 
How did yours, did they come off the tray? Because again, you could do this double stick. Uh, uh, Josie, did you all, what do you call it once? Um, your fin sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, have you stuck them together? Yeah. There you go, it'd be good. Look, everybody look at that. See, look, she had the fin ones, look. They look perfect now. So she stuck two fin ones together there, and then she's going to do it. See, that's all you've got to do. If you not, I would imagine Josie, because she put the two, she didn't do the one line, because I piped the one line and let it drip onto the tray. But she did three lines somehow. Don't know how you done that, but <laughs> she did the three lines. But and it, obviously, it compressed it down. Um, yeah, I had a real skinny nozzle. And a skinny so nose. Well, all right, so that probably wouldn't have happened. All, so I did three but, lines, thinking it would thicken it up a bit, not flatten it down a bit. But again, now they look fine, because they taste fine, and now you put them together and you're hiding it. Yeah, you said still... sandwich some and top the bottom ones of the broken ones. Did they taste all right, though, Vicky? Have you kids of them? Um, who else was there? So... Vegan, one, vegan ones good. didn't work. Jackie Pang's work, yeah. So you, did they take a lot of cream? I would imagine yours took a fair bit of cream if you only had five out of that mix. But it's just like that thick with cream. But you do need uh, a lot of flavour. If you just have just normal cream in there, it's too light. Yeah. You do need uh, your ice and sugar to break down the... Vicky Farden said lovely. They were good, Vicky. Right. But now everybody knows the rough way of doing it. You, if you've come way, right. it, you know what to do. Now I would say I've got, I did a, a parry, parry breast um, this afternoon, and basically it's to do with about a bike race that was cycled from Paris to another French town, which is to the left, and it's called Brest, but it's B-R-E-S-T. So to celebrate it, they made a cake, and they made the cake like the shape of a bicycle wheel. So what I did this afternoon is I drew a six-inch circle on there, and then I piped the ice and sugar around it, and then I piped it around the outside again, and then I piped it on top, so it was like a triple layer. Bake that in the oven for about 40 minutes with loads of almonds and ice and sugar on and then filled it with uh, a chocolate cream. I'm gonna post a video up of that. So if you learn how to do the shoe pastry, you could actually go ahead and do this, but bear in mind it takes a, a bit longer to cook than these ones done in about 20, 25 minutes. This takes about sort of 40 minutes. And then you in half, gently take the top off. It's quite hard to do because it's very fragile. And then filled it with cream and then put the top back on and ice and sugar and almonds. And it, it was really, really good. I'll post that video up later. Um, but now everybody's tried this, you should be able to get on and uh, have a have a bash at doing it on your own. Because the actual mix was easy to make. This is the hardest one we've done yet, Gary. This one required technical <laughs> skill. But it's just practice though. It, it, it's easy once you know, because nobody's never done it before. You don't, um, you know, you don't know what kind of do it but if you do it a couple of times within two goes of doing it so guarantee every one of you have it mastered but like i say one of the key things is is using my chocolate ganache because look that's that's not set up that's still chocolatey and gooey there's nothing worse than having a bloody profiterole with that rock hard chocolate on when you bite it and the chocolate comes off oh, yeah, one bit. Yeah, and it's yeah. like and that's because they're using cheap ass chocolate mm. and it just comes off and it's like it's just pointless if you're going to make it use the proper stuff and that stay gooey and sticky you'll eat that and you'll have like a fudgy chocolate top jackie pan says fantastic thanks hi man no toy worries. says thank you it was awesome watching you always enjoy saturday what we do next week ah. fantastic food fantastic evening just a shame that i will feel like shit in the morning <laughs> <Who's that? laughs> love <laughs> Right, so next week we had a choice of two things. Now, I don't know whether I'm going too technical with this because I'm like... We'll get me to do it. <sighs> no, no, no. All right. I've got the idea. At the moment, <laughs> right, this is the two ideas. A Japanese jiggly wiggly cheesecake. What is that then? Which is oh, like a cheesecake which is about that big. Yeah. I've never made it before. This is something I'm doing for the first time. I might just do it live with you so it might even be more fun because I might screw it up as well. 
but you make this massive jiggly cake, cheesecake, you take it out and you can shake it and it just wobbles, but it's like a cheesecake sponge. I don't know if everybody's seen the videos that float around on Facebook, but we could do that, which would be interesting, or we could do a mirror cake, which is a special icing we put over some sort of cake, which you'll have to think about what we do, and then you put like sort of the three, four different pots of colours and you pour it over and you end up with this marvellous, um, like a mirror glaze jelly icing over the top and it just looks stunning. I've always wanted to make them and I've never done that before. But I don't know whether it's too technical. Or oh, if anybody else got any other suggestions, what you'd like to see me do, I ain't doing pies though. Don't want to do pies. Can't give me secrets away, I need you to come in and buy them. If I tell Toya how I make the pies, you won't buy pies in the post for me anymore, <laughs> will you? Right, I'm assuming everybody must be done now. Anybody got any more questions? And if you haven't, I'm going to say Tara. I might just say Shuba March. <laughs> I'm reasonably sober this week. I've had to keep sober because it was a bit more tricky um, doing stuff. I haven't been doing proper shots. Mark's eaten half his shoe buns already. Oh, profit rolls. <laughs> <laughs> well, the baked Alaska. See, baked Alaska would be good, but the only thing with a baked Alaska, it'll have to be a two-parter yeah, again. Yeah, you have to bake your ice cream, won't you? Yeah, and the problem with doing a two-part is it makes it a whole day, doesn't it? It means you've got to come in the day, leave, and then come back later. So I, I don't know. Toy said mirror cake, and my order for next week is on the way. Oh, if you want order for next week, Toya. Get it in. I need to get it in because I'm filling up now. I've got <laughs> quite a few pies in the post next week. They're in too many Can slots left. Oh yeah, got your si is it your sister or your sister-in-law? She's ordered a massive box. She's actually ordered the box that's that big. I don't even know if I can get it all in there. There's so much of it. But she said she'll have two boxes. But she's said she might split the two boxes. But yeah, she's um she's got stuff. But I've got quite a few on next week. So if you do want it to you, just drop me a note and then I'll just keep a spot back for you. Mark James has eaten most of his too. I haven't even tried mine yet. Shall I go and get the kids to try them live? <laughs> yeah. Yeah! I get the kids to have live tasting. Two seconds. Kids, anybody want profiteroles? Yes! So, anybody want profiteroles, kids? And then it was like, yeah, and I can just see if you're here, you're here and running down the stairs in a second. Helen wants baked Helen wants baked Hello, Alaska. Helen. Right. So, fancy. What is that? We have Biscoff. Shoe buns. Shoe bun, yay, shop. Sure. I have. Do you want to do halves? Yeah. Because uh, that way you can. Uh... Oh, so there you go. Aww. Amy okay. Joyce said these are great, and I can't believe how straightforward they were to make. With your excellent instructions, live feed bake. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Right, we're live. Can we have, uh, oh. can we have a, a taste in. Uh, mm. <laughs> does it taste all right? Not having that jack cake. Yeah. Do, do we do the jack cake? Yeah. Mm. Go on in. <laughs> we can taste the. Jack the cake. Um, it does taste jack cake. It tastes like um, orange jammy. Okay, so that one. We've got then. like live, like threads of orange mm. in it. Yeah, like mm. orange. So. And then we got Biscoff. The taste oh, of the Biscoff. Biscoff. <laughs> Biscoff eclairs. Right. Oh, so, that one's the best. The Biscoff's the best, apparently. Where's Sam? Very nice. So Biscoff's the best, her uh, face lit up. That is um, good. Right, so if everybody's all cool, I'm going to shoot on. And, uh, on. Shoot on. Shoot. I'm going to shoot. Shoot on, Mark. Shoot on. <laughs> Right, um, is everybody good? Anybody got any more questions before we go? How do you ice them when they're sideways? Like, my eclair, because of how I've cut it, is kind of at an angle. So how am I meant to get chocolate on top of it? Can you see that one there? Yeah, right, what you need to do there... Should we just, should we just get rid of everybody and then I'll yeah. show you. you can... Do they might have the same problem? Does anyone oh, else have want to do in the start, What you need to do is get your sugar, get your chocolate. You want a spoon? Just spoon it over. 
and then use the back of the spoon just to spread it across your because that way you can get to the the bit that you you know that's not quite even and if it all drips over it doesn't matter you want them dripping don't you they look better when it's dripping was the chocolate on the top different this time um yeah because this is i did the ganache oh, yeah. oh amy joy that's yeah, the, the sauce oh, i didn't realize that yeah. okay does that work for you now yeah sorted yeah right so anybody else any any more for any more pop your pictures up <coughs> uh pop suggestions for next <laughs> week and then oh, we'll oh. go from there i'll figure it out just and, got desserts uh, got food again yeah, I mean, if anybody wants savoury, we can do savoury, but Josie doesn't like doing savoury. Perhaps we get Mary in to do savoury. Where is Mary? I can't she believe Mary. Mary. Did we? We didn't get Mary. Yeah, Did we get Mary, Mary today? <laughs> didn't do a run through. She didn't go. <laughs> right, feel good. Oh God, I can hear. I was going to say I can hear the pitter patter of tiny feet. Now I can hear the hooves of giant feet. <laughs> Push the door open. <laughs> <laughs> I want you. Oh. <laughs> Everybody's waiting for Mary. She's coming. She's coming, is she? Watching Eurovision. Watching Eurovision? Oh, I forgot that was on. What a shame. Are they doing that one then? No, they're going back for the years. I ain't watching that crap. <laughs> Eurovision. Come on, Mary. You gotta speed it up. And then you gotta slip it down. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Goodbye, Mary. Right. I've been thanked. I've just come to make a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all good to go. Everybody's happy. Okay, it's going to be one of your cups of tea, I think. I think it's going to be one of Helen's cups of tea. <laughs> Yay! Do you want to see the kitchen? Oh, I think I'm going to. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you used the whole kitchen, didn't you? She, she needs oh, training. There's the sink. <laughs> That's my abandoned oh, <laughs> What are these here? Are these cheese donuts? Yeah, so that, that's uh, that's the aftermath. One. Yeah, they're just they're just shoe buns. Sharp. <laughs> right. 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 We're gonna say one. goodbye to everybody. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you going to delete it off? Do you need to stay on to sort the rest out? We're you good. I think we're all good. Right. What about your other cakes? Huh? Did you bake them off? Your other ones on the trays, did you bake them off? She's eating them now, naked. Okay. Alright, bye Mary. See you later. Bye. Thanks everybody, see you in the next week. Yeah, that replicate now is better than the first one. Yeah, this one was the best one. Does anybody else want to take? You've sorted the tea bags out. Oh, I'm getting cut. What's that say? That's share information. Send email, send message. No one's here sharing the meeting. Oh, probably gone then. <laughs>